Are you looking for demographic information that goes a little further than what the census provides? My name is Olivier Charbonneau. I'm a business librarian at Concordia University, and I'm going to show you the National Household Survey from Statistics Canada. So we've just covered the Census of Canada, which happens every five years. Now something happened during the last census in 2011. The Harper government decided to get rid of the long form of the census. So what happened was everybody has to answer the Census of Canada. We have to do this because it's within its Canadian law, it's in the Canadian Constitution, and the government uses it, uses the information in a wide variety of things, but no, most notably to divide up the seats within the House of Commons. It also uses the information for social programs and other things. Now, in previous census, in the ones in 2006, 2001, every fifth person had to answer what is called the long form of the census. They had to provide a lot more information to the government. This was required by law. It was kind of like your census lottery. So every fifth person, long form. So in 2011, the Canadian, the federal government, Harper government, decided to get rid of the long form. And Statistics Canada decided to offer a, 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 a optional household survey uh, to replace the long form. So when you were answering your regular short form census, you had the option to answer the long form. And so if you're really engaged in providing information to the government so that they could have good social programs and you give information to StatScan so it has a clear picture of Canadians, then you did answer uh, your uh, long form. And I did answer for myself and my family. I answered the National Household Survey. So it, StatsCan used to provide the information from the long form and the short form together in the same place. But because it's a different methodology, you have to go somewhere else to find information about the National Household Survey. So it happens every five years. It happened in 2011. And I'm assuming it's going to happen during the next census in 2060. The great thing about it, despite the fact that it's optional, is that still a lot of Canadians answered it, and it's probably the most comprehensive consumer survey out there. It doesn't give you everything about consumers, but it goes a long way. And let me show you how to find it, access it, and use it. So I'm here on the uh, statcan.gc.ca, the Statistics Canada website, and what you want to look for is here, if you browse down a little bit, under the features, I have another video about the Census of Canada as well as CANSIM. So I have two different videos on those, but I want to go into the National Household Survey for now. And it works exactly the same way as the Census conceptually. You have the data for the whole country and you can use the interface to drill down to specific, uh, very specific regions of the country. So for that, you have to go here under the data products under the National Household Survey Profile, NAH, NAS Profile, and browse down a little bit to where you get to the postal code, okay? And so here again, I'm gonna use the postal code for Concordia, which is H3G1M8. I'm gonna try that. You don't have to use the capital letters, so I'm gonna search. And again, here you get the different regions the different areas that StatScan provides uh, information for. So I'm going to zip through straight to the census track. If you want to know more about the different regions uh, of Canada and how StatScan is divided up, you have some information for that on the StatScan website. Also, you could watch my video on the census where I talk about that. And uh, for example, the census track covers from Peel Street to Guy Street, to, and from Sherbrooke to St. Catherine. So it's gonna give you the information for that specific neighborhood. All right, so let's go in and check out the information from the National Household Survey uh, available from StatScan. Now, the first thing they tell us, which I think is very interesting here, is the NHS data quality indication here. And it says that 32.5% of re residents of this census tract did not answer the National Household Survey. But that still leaves 
a lot of people in. And if you read the help, if you click on this link to read what StatScan has to say about the, the global non-response rate, they say that about 50% is good enough to be a representative for the whole area. So I think, well, I'll let you decide whether or not that's a representative information, but that's still, you know, that still leaves in 67.5% uh, of the people who, answer, who did answer uh, the National Household Survey. Now, if you want to get a sense of what's in this system, here you could select uh, d different types of data that you have here. Of, of notable interest for business students is the income of households, right? Uh, labor, mobility, and other and shelter costs. So those are different types of uh, uh, economic or business data that could be useful. Let's go into the income of households and see what uh, kind of information we can get. I really love this. If you want to have a, a good time, type in your own personal uh, postal code and get a sense of what your neighbors are like. That's what I like to do on my free time. So for example here, we see that there are about a thousand households in this census tract and you get the distribution of households in terms of how much money they make. Right. So, for example, there are 60 households out of the 1065 that make one hundred and fifty thousand dollars or more. You could calculate ratios and percentages. The other thing you could get, you get after tax income, which is also interesting, as well as average and median income. So you could see here that the media median income is twenty three thousand dollars, but the average household income is forty one thousand dollars. That's because the, the median and the average are not close to each other or overlap, it means there's a skew in the distribution. There are probably, you know, some people making some amount of money and then a few outliers that are that are skewing the average away from the median. Of course, and you, a median means what the 50th person out of 100 is making. So you could claim that half the people in this census tract make at least $23,000. Actually, yeah. And then the average revenue is uh, household income is $41,000. So that's an example of uh, the kind of data that you get for the household income. The other option here is to go to the labor where you see uh, the language that people use at work, right? And but also uh, the labor force status. So if people are uh, full time or part time, as well as uh, in which industry or in which occupation they're in. Sorry, that's the first thing is the occupation. And then the two digit Nike's code for where they work, right? So you can see here, there are a lot of people, about 200 who are in the uh, uh, professional scientific and technical uh, services. So accountants and marketers, and I think lawyers are in there as well. So uh, you could look, I mean, you look at the Nike's code and you could see where people work. So this is also interesting if you're doing a diet direct marketing campaign and you want to sell mail to people, uh, it's interesting to know uh, where these people work. You also have for direct marketing, you have tools from um, Post Canada. I won't get into those right now. But I did want to, to show you the additional information that Statistics Canada has gathered for a census track. So, and actually from this view, you could see also the census data for the same census track and toggle from one to the other, right? So you could see here that this, according to the census, there's, well, one, uh, there's private dwellings occupied by usual residents. There's a 1,064. And anyways, we've covered that in another video. But the point is that the National Household Survey is a distinct questionnaire that was optionally suggested to people who were answering the census. It happens every five years, so you may think the data gets a little old, but honestly, because it covers so many people in Canada, it's also a wonderful resource to use when you're trying to get a picture, a demographic picture of a region of Canada.